Providence. I got, I got one person. All right, those, those who know, we'll try again. Providence. Oh, there we go. I know for some of you, you're like, I have no idea what any of that it means, and that's okay. Uh, welcome to uh, Providence's All School Orientation. Uh, so good to see so many familiar faces. So good to see so many new faces as well. We're so glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, you might be wondering at this point, where is Mr. Buckles? Um, and that is a fair question. The good news is Mr. Buckles is following our sick policy by staying home. The bad news is he's not feeling very well this evening. And so uh, he's not able to join us. And so you have me for the whole time. Uh, for better or for worse, you decide. But uh, we're glad that you're here with us this evening. I do want to just take a moment, since he's not here, to recognize Mr. Buckles. Uh, because truly Providence where it wouldn't be where we're at apart from his tireless work as headmaster and as captain of our ship. And so, uh, and, and so much of the preparation for this evening and for this school year uh, has lain at his feet. And, uh, and so even though he's not here, let's go ahead and give a round of applause to Mr. Buckles. And this is a good segue to note that it is being recorded so he can watch the recording of you all applauding him. And so if there are things that I say tonight and you're like, I don't remember that, I don't have a pen and paper out to, to keep notes, that's okay. Uh, there will be both a recording of it and a summary, a written summary that's in the Friday memo. If you hear a Friday memo and, you, memo and you're like, I don't know what that is, uh, stop by the office, talk to Mrs. Case, and we'll make sure that you're added to the list. It is one of the things we automatically do as families enroll, so you should be getting the Friday memo. So if you don't, haven't gotten that yet, uh, make sure that you reach out to the office. That's where you get all of the most up-to-date and relevant information from us. Uh, this also means, by the way, that I'm borrowing Mr. Buckle's notes, and so if I start talking about my wife, Lindsay, and my family in Edwardsville, just know I'm not completely crazy, just a little. Um, one other side note, I know a number of folks have asked, we said, hey, there's child care for pre-K through first. There is. It's our faculty that are going to be providing that, and we want to introduce them to you first. And so once we've introduced our faculty, uh, that's when, when we'll invite uh, students pre-K through first to come up with them, and they're going to head next door and run through a few different stations while we finish our time together. But before I introduce our faculty, um, I just wanted to, to make a few brief comments. First, uh, we are so pleased to welcome you back for another year at Providence or your first year at Providence. Another year of pursuing our vision as a classical Christian school, cultivating growth in wisdom, virtue, and eloquence to the glory of God. And it's our joy to educate students for a life of growth and their love for all things that are true, good, and beautiful. And with the anchor that we have in that vision, uh, first grounding us as a Christian school faithful to the scriptures and the gospel of Christ, and then as a classical school with a liberal arts approach that's informed by and complementary to our Christian identity, we see the incarnation of the community that you see before you, of faculty and families that are the true embodiment of that envision and the outworking of it. And so thank you for joining us in this great enterprise and for your investment in this worthwhile work. Uh, we're daily encouraged by you all and are looking forward to another year of, of preserving what Providence stands for and passing it on to the next generation. Providence has proven to stand out to many families over the years because of its reliability and its faithfulness to its vision. Uh, put another way, we've proven to be revolutionary merely by staying the same. Indeed, we will make minor revisions to curriculum here or there or have other modifications, but all of these things are actually meant to get us closer to the vision that we have for, a, uh, for Providence as a classical Christian school. And it's a privilege to be part of that school, to shepherd not only the mind, but heart and soul of our students. Joining with you as parents in your efforts as you disciple your children uh, to grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So thanks for allowing us to partner with you in this, and we hope that this evening sets you up well as you enter into this year of seeking the Lord's blessing in these efforts. And so tonight, what we're going to look at is we're going to talk about operations, academics, student life, and I'm briefly going to comment on some upcoming events. Um, and we'll begin by introducing the faculty in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to open us in a brief word of prayer. Father God, thank you for this room full of people, Lord, for uh, folks that have been here for decades, for folks for whom this is one of their first times walking into the building. 
Lord, we're grateful that the thing that has united us here is most uh, chiefly your son Jesus, who he is, what he's done on our behalf. Lord, we're grateful for this vision and calling that you've entrusted to us as administration, as faculty, um, but even as a whole community. And we ask that you would be with us and help us to be faithful to it. Would tonight be a blessing, uh, both in uh, the information that's passed on, but especially in the fellowship we share. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to start by introducing our faculty, and again, then we'll dismiss our uh, younger students with them uh, to, to hang out next door. Um, and I'm going to start by introducing some new faculty, talking about some changes in roles, and then I'm going to and then at the end of that, I'm just going to go down the list of our faculty. So if I'm saying your name right now, you can stay seated, uh, faculty, and then I'll invite all faculty up as I kind of go down the list after that. Uh, so as many of you know, we did go down to the wire in our hiring of a few positions this year, and perhaps you felt a little anxiety about that. I know that we did at times, but we believe that it was in the Lord's providence because we couldn't be more excited about the new faculty that are joining us this year. So I want to introduce a few of them to you. Again, we'll invite them up when we invite the rest of the faculty up in a bit. Uh, first, Mrs. Tanya Barrymore is serving as our pre-K-4 aide. Um, Mrs. Barrymore uh, actually has had students attend here before, and then her twin boys are going to be attending in uh, kindergarten this year as well. So we're so delighted to have her back with us now, not just as a parent, but also as a faculty member. In kindergarten, Mrs. Chris Bunyak. Uh, that last name may sound familiar to some of you, and that's because our fourth grade teacher also shares that last name. And it is indeed true that they are related. Um, so Mrs. Bunyak is uh, Miss Emma Bunyak's mother, and uh, we're delighted to have her joining us as our kindergarten teacher. Uh, she brings a wealth of experience both in the classroom and homeschooling in the classical tradition, and so we're so excited she's joining us. Uh, Mrs. Spencer DeKemper is going to be serving as our kindergarten aide this year. So we have a kindergarten class of 18 students, so that is a very big class. And so we have a kindergarten aide that's joining us uh, for half days in kindergarten, and Mrs. DeKemper is doing that, and we're grateful for her. Uh, not with us this evening, Mr. Brendan DeYoung. Uh, he... Uh, applied and was hired last week, and then uh, he got married on Friday and left for his honeymoon Saturday evening. And in between those two, he met with Mr. Buckles to find out more about the details of his position. And uh, he's returning to us late on Monday night and will be joining us Wednesday of next week. So we're super excited to have him on board. And uh, we know it's a bit of a whirlwind of transitions for him, but he's excited to join us when he returns. And then finally, Mrs. Jenny Matul is uh, joining the faculty to teach seventh grade history. Uh, Mrs. Matul has uh, served on the faculty years past. Uh, most recently, she served as a, a receptionist and director of enrollment, so you might have seen her name from that. And, uh, and so we're delighted to have her back as seventh, uh, teaching seventh grade history. One of the things you'll notice is that this room is quite full, and we have a lot of folks joining us this year. And so uh, in an effort to recognize that we're a growing school and that we have faculty that are very talented, uh, we, want, we have decided to appoint a number of different faculty members to what we're calling uh, administrative assistant positions that, that are titled uh, directors. Now, some of these teachers have already served in this capacity to some extent, and so we're kind of just codifying that this year. So first uh, up is Stephanie Bliss. She's serving as our director of athletics. She's continuing to do that. She uh, began in that role last year. Mrs. Jenny Matul, who I just mentioned, is continuing to serve as our director of enrollment. Uh, she takes in on our initial inquiries, sets up visits, and all those kind of things that really help out Mr. Buckles and myself. Mrs. Ryder is taking on a new role. You'll know her as uh, our music and choir teacher, but in addition to her music and choir responsibilities, she's now director of events and communications. So if you see more frequent Facebook posts, know that that's because she's in charge of Facebook and not me. Um, uh, Mr. Duvier is uh, taking on the formal role of Director of Faculty Development. He's already been aiding us in our professional development over the past couple years, but he's stepping into that role uh, more officially. And then Ms. Brewer is stepping in as Director of Academics, uh, seeing through uh, a number of different ventures related to curriculum evaluation, strategic planning, and those kind of things. Um, so those are uh, new faculty joining us, transitions, and new appointments. At this point, what I want to do is actually invite 
uh, our faculty to come up. So as I say your name, go ahead and come on up, and then we'll uh, uh, recognize them all at the end once I've gone through everybody. And as you come up, kind of start way over there, and then we'll, we'll kind of spread out across in front of me. So first up, serving as our pre-K, pre-kindergarten teacher, is Mrs. Kathleen Ackridge. Sure, you can, yeah, we can give applause as they come up. That's great. <laughs> Serving as our pre-K aide is Mrs. Tanya Bearmore. <laughs> Serving as our kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Chris Buniak. <laughs> Serving as our kindergarten aide, Mrs. Spencer DeKemper. Returning is our first grade teacher, Mrs. Colette Upton. And returning is our second grade teacher is Mrs. Patricia Horton. Our third grade teacher is Mrs. Jackie Gathman. For fourth grade, we have Miss Emma Buniak. Serving as the fifth grade primary teacher as well as lower school liaison is Mrs. Kim Sparks. <laughs> Teaching fifth grade composition among other subjects is Mrs. Lindsay Block. Our sixth grade primary teacher is Mrs. Bethany Chelsvik. Teaching sixth grade mathematics as well as upper school mathematics is Mrs. Stephanie Bliss. <laughs> Teaching sixth grade science along with upper school science and math classes is Miss Ruth Temme. <laughs> and as I mentioned, not with us tonight, but teaching sixth grade grammar and upper school Latin courses along with rhetoric is Mr. Brendan DeYoung. And we're going to start getting to the point on the list where names are repeated, so I'm going to uh, kind of just name this quickly. If you're already up here, you can wave, you know, give the presidential wave. Uh, 436 Latin is Mrs. Lindsay Block. Uh, music, upper school choir, director of events and communications is Mrs. Krista Ryder. Teaching art, but I don't believe here with us tonight, is Mrs. Kimberly Doyle. Teaching 7th grade composition, 7th and 8th Latin, 9th and 10th literature, Mr. Jacob Duvier. <laughs> Teaching 7th and 8th Bible, 8th history, 8th composition, 9th through 11th theology. That's a lot of different subjects. Mr. Pete Watson. <laughs> Teaching 7th and 10th math, 7th, 10th, and 11th science, Mrs. Kareen Zrodlowski. And I've noted that he's not here, but he is teaching eighth grade logic as is tradition. That's Mr. Chris Buckles. And I'm looking through to see if I've hit everybody. I have not. Administrative assistant and uh, all around office guru, Mrs. Pam Case. And teaching a variety of rhetoric and history courses, and surely is on this list, is uh, Mrs. Rachel Brewer. <laughs> All right, well, I want to take, uh, well, let's, let's take a moment to recognize our whole faculty for this year. I want you to know that this faculty is passionate about caring for and educating your children. Uh, they have prayed for your children. Uh, they are thrilled and excited to have the opportunity to teach them this year. And so I want to take a moment to pray for our faculty, and then we'll uh, uh, in, uh, dismiss our younger kids. Father, thank you for uh, this group of faculty. We pray that you'd guard and protect them over the coming year. Would you sustain them for the work that's before them? Would you help them, by your grace, 
fulfill the calling that you've placed upon them to be teachers and shepherds for the students and children that you've entrusted to their care. And we ask it and are grateful for your, your presence and your grace and your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, at this point, if you have a pre-K student or first grade student, they are welcome to head right on up here. Or what I say? Pre-K through first grade is what I was trying to say. Should head up to the front here because we have stuff for you to do. That went more smoothly than I anticipated. Now we'll hope that the, the, the power doesn't go out like it did last year at this moment. Um, all right, I want to continue on and introduce to you a few more folks. Uh, at this point, I want to introduce you to uh, the Pro members of the Providence Board. The Providence Board is made up of Providence parents like yourselves, um, and they serve in a variety of different capacities. Uh, for each of you, at some point, you were interviewed by the board as you came into the school. That's one of their responsibilities, but they serve as gatekeeper, guardians of our vision, and, uh, and, and uh, they've, they spend many, many hours caring for our school, so I want to introduce them. Uh, when I say your name, if you could just stand and, uh, and wave, and we, we'll acknowledge you. So first, the chairman of our board is Johnny Sermon. The vice chair is Craig Ryder. Our secretary is Brett Vaden. Our treasurer is Amy Ahrens. And those of you who have been following along and been part of the school for a long time know I haven't mentioned a board member that has served for a really long time. In fact, he's served on the board since 2004, and he served as the chairman of the board up until this year, since 2007. That means he served as chair of the board for 15 years at Providence. He'll continue to serve on the board, but is getting a uh, much-deserved break. So I want to show us to show our appreciation for Mr. Dan Marcotte for his many years of service. All right, so now we're into the nitty gritty, and I'm gonna try and be as efficient as I can be, because I know that there's ice cream on the other end of this thing. Um, so, first thing on the list is operations, and I'm gonna talk to you about a few different things. The first is communications. The Friday memo, I only have two words for you. Read it, read it. Uh, all of the things that we think, hey, you need to know this, they will be in there. Um, that Friday memo is accessible because it's going to get pushed to your email. You can also access it on uh, the Providence app, uh, which you can download in iOS or Android stores. It's called, if you just search Providence Family App, you'll find the Providence app. The Friday memos are stored right there. Just click on that button and you'll be able to see everything in the memos. Um, and so uh, Mr. Buckles and I make sure that you know, we, we meet and make sure that that, that uh, document alongside uh, the other office staff has all the, the things that you need, so please do be sure to read it. Uh, we will use the Remind Text Blast service for emergencies or important announcements, such as uh, school closure due to inclement weather. So if you ever get a, a text blast and it says it's coming from Providence, uh, usually it'll say to the lower school or to the upper school, 
And uh, that's us trying to give you information that we think is time sensitive. It's, it's usually going to be things that we're, we want you to make sure that you know. And if it, we just sent you an email, we're not sure you'd get it in time. So uh, the obvious one are snow days or things like that. Uh, if there's ever a late change to an event or something like that, we would use it. We try to use it sparingly um, so that we're not inundating you with text uh, so that you know if you get a text from us, it probably means that it's somewhat important. All right, uh, so that's communications. Uh, next, facility. Uh, so we just want to note that we're grateful for another year of parting, partnering with Wellspring Family Church in this building. We've been here for many, many years. Uh, it's been a really great partnership and relationship that we've had with the church. Um, and as they've, they uh, merged a few years ago uh, with another church to form Wellspring, uh, they've continued to, to sort of process, hey, what is the future, long-term future going to look like for them facility-wise? We've been involved in those conversations with them as well and will continue to be um, with hopes that our partnership can continue into the future. We don't have concrete things for you, but just know that those things are uh, percolating and in our minds as administration, especially as we continue to grow in size. Uh, we also want to say thank you to the many families who donated time and money this summer in order to prove the school, uh, improve the school building. Uh, you can take a look at the pre-K room, which is essentially a brand new room, thanks to those donations of time, money, and skill uh, from our families. Some of those skills involved uh, replumbing a water line over a door. Mr. Keating said, hey, I just want a door in this wall. That should be easy, right? And there was a water line in it, and so we had uh, help with that, installing, flooring, all those kind of things. I know a number of you came out for the workday, so thank you uh, for serving us in that way. Uh, updates on enrollment. And uh, so the first thing to note is that our current enrollment is sitting somewhere between 140 and 150 students, and we still have a number of students that are, are making their way through that pipeline. And so we're optimistic that our enrollment this year will be north of 150. Um, and again, for those of you who've been here for a length of time, you know that's the largest the school has ever been. You'll know that that reflects uh, about four consecutive years of really consistent growth, and we're, we're incredibly excited about that prospect. Um, and so we're thankful to the Lord for his provision for it, and uh, we, I guess the, the one thing we do want to note is that there probably are going to be some bumps in the road as we adjust to that growth. So we were a, a school of 123 students a year ago. So we'll be a student of about 150, 155, somewhere in there this year. So uh, we, you know, Mr. Buckles and I are going to do our best to continue to serve you in the same capacity that we have. We're trying to get out in front of that with our director appointments and things like that. But uh, I'm sure there will be some bumps in the road along the way. And so we do ask for your grace in the midst of that. Uh, deeds for dollars reminder. Uh, every year, families uh, are asked to give 50 hours of service to the school. And so tonight's a great night to inquire of classroom teachers um, what, what areas of service they might need. Um, and that's one of the best ways to get your hours. Um, or if you have particular skill sets at, or gifts, and you, if you can let the office know that, hey, I'd be willing to help in this capacity, uh, that's really useful for us to know. Because when a project comes up, we put our heads together and think about, hey, who could we ask? And so kind of knowing what gifts and uh, availability is out there in the community is very helpful to us. All right, uh, I know that I have a bag up here. This is my bag of uh, props and uh, sort of show and tell. Uh, so my next item is the upper school PE uniform. So uh, previously we've sort of had a, just a, a guidelines for PE. Now we are providing uh, shorts for PE. They're super stylish, super cool. You know, we are going to, we're going to change fashion trends with this, I think. Uh, no, that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is to um, provide consistency. And, uh, and so those shorts are available. We, we're providing the one pair of those for every upper school student, and you'll get that by stopping by in the office. So be sure to stop by the office to pick up your pair of super styling athletic shorts. As far as the top, you can wear any Providence t-shirt, uh, March and Serve in the Park t-shirts, Play Week t-shirts. If you're new to Providence and you're thinking, I don't have a t-shirt yet, stop by the office. We'll provide you a, a t-shirt as well, and then you'll accumulate some as the year goes on as well. All right, on to uh, POPs. POPs is our parents' organization, and they're always looking for parents uh, to join with them in prayer and service to our school and our communities. They've been around since really the beginning of the school, and they serve in a number of ways. 
to our school community. Um, they provide faculty appreciation throughout the year. They arrange refreshments and service at our school. So we had lunch yesterday at our faculty training courtesy of POPs. Um, you'll see them tonight helping serve ice cream in just a little bit. POPs also gathers regularly to pray for the school and faculty and students on a weekly basis. Uh, they, provide, they also do some fundraising to provide needs for the school. So if you stopped by the kindergarten classroom and saw all new desks in there, those are courtesy of POPs and their fundraising. And they also connect families to one another. So if you're a new family looking for a way to get connected into service, POPs is uh, our recommendation as a place to start. Uh, if you want to know more about it, send them an email. Their email is POPs, P-O-P-S, at ProvidenceSTL.org. So that's the way to get connected. Again, we'll that, that information is included in Friday memos. Uh, COVID protocols, you're thinking, I can't believe it's still here. It's still here. Um, as of the beginning of the school year, we're removing the preventative measures of the last few years and moving merely into responding to positive cases. What does that mean? It means that when a community member tests positive for COVID, we're going to ask them to stay home and uh, observe a five-day recovery period before returning. But that's just common practice with positive cases of COVID at this point. We're not going to quarantine or direct those who come in contact with COVID to remain home unless they express symptoms or test positive. So we're basically, uh, as an administration and school, no longer going to uh, be overseeing quarantining or uh, whether you should stay home if you've been exposed. We're going to leave that to your judgment based on uh, the degree of exposure and things like that. So that will be a family judgment on your part. Uh, we're not going to require mask wearing in the school day or at school events, though community members are all, always welcome to wear them at their own discretion. And finally, we'll, we will continue to not require the COVID vaccine. So hopefully all of those feel uh, pretty in line with uh, where pandemic response things are these days. If you have questions about any of those pieces, please do feel free to reach out to Mr. Buckles or myself, and, and we'll continue to monitor the situation and respond accordingly uh, should it change or shift. But we do intend this year to respond to COVID very similarly to how we would respond to any other communicable illness. That's operations. I'm going to touch briefly on academics and faculty development. Uh, the first thing to note here is that it is a reaccreditation year for us. So every five years, we're up for reaccreditation. Uh, it won't mean a ton to you. It means a lot to administration and faculty because we have some work to do. Uh, Cognia is our accreditation agency, and they are review, we're, uh, they're gonna, it's going to involve us reviewing and sharing documents with them uh, and with a review team that's going to come in and evaluate the school. And the question they're going to be asking is, how faithful is Providence being to its own vision? And so that's one of the reasons we're thankful to work with this accrediting agency is they don't dictate to us what our vision is. We get to say, this is our vision, and they come in and hold us accountable to following that vision. And so that's something that we actually invite and are encouraged by. Um, and so they'll come and do that this year. So that's something that is uh, before us this year. And we'll let you know and give you updates as that progresses throughout the year. We're also going to be looking at a few areas of the curriculum for evaluation. We kind of focus on different areas each year. Ms. Brewer is going to be leading this this year as our director of academics. We'll be looking at lower school math and science, middle school history, uh, the middle school history cycle, so it's really fifth through eighth grade, um, and high school rhetoric. And so those are a few things that we're examining and um, uh, evaluating this year. Faculty development and professional development. Uh, Mr. Duvier is updating our faculty professional development program, giving individualized plan to each faculty for a path of growth and development in the craft of teaching. As a community of, of teachers, we want to continue to get better at our craft of teaching. And so uh, faculty development is uh, a key part of that. We're also going to be reviewing all uh, our, our sort of faculty training schedule, uh, potentially revisiting how we lay those out throughout the school year. All right, I have another thing for my bag. So one of the things we do every year, uh, right around the beginning of January, is we put on, the upper school puts on a Shakespeare play. Uh, and we say it's Shakespeare in a week because we take a week off school and put it on. It doesn't technically all happen in that week, but a lot of it does. And so it is tradition at upper school orientation to announce the uh, play that we're going to do for the coming year. And so uh, the, this play is perhaps slightly lesser known, but we think it's a great fit for the student body we have and their comedic skills. And so this year's play is going to be Shakespeare's The Comedy of Errors.
So we're looking forward to auditions, casting, and all the preparation that goes into uh, putting on that play in early January. You'll be invited to attend. I'm going to switch gears again and touch on student life at this point um, and talk about our morning prayer service that we call Matins. Uh, so Matins, the word, references a, sort of historically a morning prayer service, and it's part of what's sometimes called the daily office of prayer, time, times throughout the day that are intended to draw one closer to God through prayer. Uh, during Matins here at Providence, we meet from 8.15 to 8.25 in the morning. Everyone, all faculty, all students, pre-K, four all the way up through 12th grade, we'll meet in here, and we'll sing a hymn, read a psalm aloud together, and pray for the day, and that's all collected in the book that is uh, the sort of Providence uh, book of Matin's prayer, and so uh, we always invite parents to stick around, so if you want to drop your kids off and stick around for that, for those 10 minutes, you're really welcome to. We'll have copies of these for you to follow along with. And, uh, and it's always our delight to have members of the community participate in that service, and you get a feel a bit more for what our school day uh, starts off with. Additionally, during that time, lower school uh, classes will do presentations and recitations, and we'll cycle through those grades. So if you're a parent of a lower school student, uh, you'll hear from your lower school grade level teacher about which days those performances are happening, so you can stick around after you drop your child off to watch them. That's Matins. The house system, most of you are familiar, we have eight houses, four upper school houses, Augustine, Alfred, Athanasius, and Albertus, and of course, four lower houses, Francis Bede, Hildegard, and Patrick. And uh, we're going to be placing new upper school students, including our rising seventh graders, into their upper school houses at our upper school retreat. Speaking of the retreat, the upper school retreat is September 1st to 2nd. That's a Thursday to Friday. It's the Thursday to Friday before the Labor Day weekend. So we'll leave Thursday morning, come back Friday around noon. It's actually a noon dismissal for everybody in the school. So upper school will come back from their retreat. Lower school will be dismissed at about the same time. So you can pick up, if you have children that span the schools, you can pick up both at the same time. Uh, the retreat is going to be at High Hill Camp, as it has been in years past. There will be paintball, uh, swimming in the lake, uh, faculty hunt, seventh grade initiation and house placements, lots of fun things, and so we're looking forward to that. Uh, more details about the retreat, including things like schedule, packing lists, is going to be coming to upper school parents in the next week, so be on the lookout for that. In addition, in the coming weeks, we're going to be placing lower school students into one of their four houses, and that's going to happen during a morning's, morning matins session. Uh, we're going to let you know the date and time ahead of time, so if you want to come and watch uh, our lower school students get really excited as they find out which house they'll be in uh, this year, uh, we'll let you know when that is, and you're welcome to join us. It's worth noting, upper school students, when they're placed in a house, they stay in that house for the duration of their time at the school. Lower school students bounce around and have uh, new houses each year, and so none of our lower school students know what house they're in for this year as of yet, and so that's some of that excitement. Of course, at the end of the, uh, so upper school and lower school houses are paired, and we'll have upper school and lower school buddies that come from those paired houses. And so if you join us for matins, that's one of the things you're going to see is that upper school students are sitting with their lower school buddies uh, for morning matins. That's a, a regular part of how we do things. The end of the year, the house system ends with uh, Finis Ani, and so those of you who participated last year saw uh, that we, uh, we, we have a lot of fun with it. I have a lot of fun with it, at least. Um, and uh, Archimedes the Boethian Owl may yet make another appearance to award the House Cup. And so uh, best wishes to House Albertus in your efforts to defend the Cup this year. Uh, I know the other houses uh, have you in their sights, so we'll see how that goes this year. Athletics, briefly, Mrs. Bliss is our athletics director. If you have questions about athletics, she's the person to talk to. Her email is her last name, bliss at providencestl.org. This is a good time to note that if you're new and you're like, I don't know who that, what that teacher's email is, it's their last name at providencestl.org. There are two exceptions. Uh, Mrs. Buniak, our kindergarten teacher, because Miss Buniak took a Buniak, so uh, she's C. Buniak, and uh, Mrs. Matul is J. Matul, so those are the two exceptions. Um, if you're interested in a fall sport, cross-country, volleyball, reach out to Mrs. Bliss. She'll put you in contact with the right person because those sports uh, are already beginning. I want to make a brief comment on technology. Uh, as most of you know, we are intentionally a low-tech school. 
And so that means we have limited tech throughout the lower school, and then we gradually introduce it in the classroom in high school in preparation for their senior thesis. Um, and that's, that's intentional, that is in many ways countercultural, uh, but we believe it's actually a really important part of our vision. The other side of that coin is how technology shows up in the home, and this is the part that might make me unpopular with some of the students in the room. Uh, so just here, what I'm about to say is, I recognize you, you are parent, you're the parents, you're gonna, you sh can and should make the decisions for your own home. So here, this is just friendly advice from the administration about what we've seen best contributes to a healthy school culture. Uh, so we uh, encourage families to monitor screen time, especially during the week, as that has a direct impact on how students uh, perform academically and how much sleep they get. Um, and then the second thing I'll just note briefly about this is smartphones, especially with texting or social media. There's so much evidence and data right now that uh, those uh, devices do, uh, they can be incredibly dangerous in terms of uh, mental health and so many other things. And so our encouragement uh, to you is that you reckon that we, our recommendation is that you wait until they have their driver's license or at least high school uh, to purchase a smartphone for them. Some of you might already have uh, provided one for your middle schooler and that's okay. Um, but our strong suggestion to you is if your middle schooler has a smartphone that you don't let them sleep with it in their room. Uh, this might feel a little bit concrete and specific, but uh, from experience, we know that this has a huge impact on uh, the life of the school, and so those are just our recommendations uh, to you. Um, your child needs sleep. They don't need Instagram, TikTok, or texts at 2 a.m. All right, Lit Fest is just around the corner. Uh, this year, our, our uh, literature festival, we're celebrating the works of Alexander Dumas, uh, and you might know him for his novels, uh, The Three Musketeers or The Count of Monte Cristo. And so if you're thinking of costumes, lower school, uh, you're, you're in 17th to 19th century France or Europe, so there's a whole bunch of things you can do with that, um, but Three Musketeers and Count of Monte Cristo are kind of uh, ideas for you to gain inspiration. And of course, there's going to be an upper school competition, and uh, all I've heard is that there's a rumor that it has something to do with swords. That's all I've heard. So uh, be on the lookout for more details in coming memos. All right, I have a, my next category is called miscellaneous. And you might feel like lots of this has been, but uh, first, recess monitoring. We've actually seen so many folks volunteer. We're so encouraged by that. There's just a few uh, spots remaining. And so this is really one of the most essential ways you can serve the school is by uh, providing oversight for recess. It gives our teachers much needed breaks throughout the school day. And so if you're interested in filling in a recess slot, please see Mrs. Case in the office. Uh, secondly, upper school chores, so you'll note lower school gets dismissed about 3.05, usually it's between 3.05 and 3.10 really. Uh, upper school gets dismissed at 3.15, but after dismissal at 3.15, they'll have chores in the, whatever classroom is their, their final classroom of the day. That means they may not actually be dismissed until as late as 3.20 depending on the day. Some of those chores are daily and they're very short, some of them are weekly and they take a little bit longer. Some of it depends on the day and uh, which chore your student is assigned. And so just be aware of that as you're scheduling after school events, activities that, it's, uh, that it, it, they may be required to stay till 320. If you have something that's unavoidable, uh, just reach out to have, have your student reach out to the teacher or reach out to the teacher to, to try and coordinate. We're always happy to work with you, but we do want you to be aware that that is one of our students' commitments. Uh, there are yard signs in the office. If you are a new Providence family and you want to put a yard sign, in your uh, yard to let other families know about Providence. I know at least one of our families that's here tonight that's new to us found out about us through a yard sign. So uh, they really work, or at least they worked once. So um, those are in the office, and so uh, please do pick one up if you're interested in posting it. There are tote bags also for sale in the office. That was uh, what I was using for show and tell. So if you want a Providence tote bag, you can pick that up in the office. All right, I'm going to touch on upcoming events. So this is my cue to upper school faculty to start gathering the kids next door because we're nearing the end, which means we're nearing ice cream. Events that are just around the corner. Back to school bonfire is in two days for upper school. So if you're an upper school student, that includes, of course, our rising seventh graders. We're welcoming you back here on Saturday evening from 7 to 9 p.m. We're gonna meet out back on the blacktop and in the field, and we'll be playing games, sports, um, hanging out, having snacks and, uh, and drinks as well. 
And so that's from 7 to 9 p.m. right here at the school uh, in two days. So that's Saturday. Secondly, next week on Tuesday, we begin the first day of school with a sort of extended matins time. That's our all-school convocation. Uh, it goes from about 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. So if you're a parent dropping your child off for the first day of school, we encourage you to stick around for our all-school convocation on Tuesday. And uh, we're actually going to get to hear from our former headmaster and longtime Providence teacher, Mr. Jonathan Matul. So last year was his final year of teaching with us, and we've already got him back to teach us some more. Parent seminars. These are a couple of resources that we provide for parents, um, and, uh, and, and they touch on a few different things. So there's an introduction to classical education that Mr. Buckles leads, and that's actually required for our new families to help you kind of become acquainted with what classical education means. Perhaps you are familiar, perhaps. That wasn't particularly the thing that drew you here, and that's okay. Um, but Mr. Buckles is going to lead that class and help explain what we mean, especially here at Providence, by classical education. And then secondly, there is a parent seminar that's going to be coming up in uh, mid-September uh, on becoming tech-wise. And so you heard some of my comments about my advice about technology. If you want to know the long, the long form of that, my rationale, all the things that I've uh, looked at and read and studied and experienced and uh, seen, I'm really happy to share that with you. And so we, uh, we recommend that for kind of middle grades, fourth to eighth grade as your parents, as your kids are kind of rising into that. Uh, age range, but it really is relevant for, for parents of any age, and it's an uh, open invitation for parents of any age. All right, that was a lot of information, and normally I get to share it with Mr. Buckles, but uh, you had me for all of it. Um, again, a recap of key points, video, that's going to be available in the memo tomorrow, so if there were any pieces of that that you're like, ah, I don't remember Mrs. Miss, Mrs. Buniak's email, that's okay, you, you don't need to remember those details. Um, at this point, I'm going to invite our younger students back into the room. I'm guessing that they're still getting themselves together next door. Um, so when they come back in, we'll welcome them back in. We'll have them find you. Then I'm going to pray, and then we'll dismiss next door uh, to enjoy some ice cream together. You want to go check and see if they're close? They're coming. I guess I'll use this moment to note that once your children come back and they come to you, uh, they are your responsibility from here on out. And so, uh, yep. All right. Well, I know we're all eager to uh, share some fellowship and some ice cream. And so let me close us in prayer and then you're uh, dismissed ahead next door. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we are grateful for the many gifts, for your many gifts to us, uh, for this community of believers who are committed to you, for uh, this collection of teachers who so passionately desire to serve our students, for these parents who desire to raise up their children to be good citizens of your kingdom most of all. For these students who are in this room, who are made in your image and growing into it each day as they learn more about your word and your world. Lord, we commit this year to you. Lord, we ask that you would bless the work of our hands. We know that unless you build the house, the laborers uh, labor in vain. And so we ask for your help. Would you give wisdom and grace to the administration and the board as they lead 
to the faculty as they shepherd and teach, to the parents as they shepherd and guide, and to our students as they learn and grow. Uh, Protect us from pride and arrogance, from division and folly. Would you grow us in wisdom and patience, charity and humility? Make us more and more like our Lord Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Would, may we as administrators, faculty, parents, and students grow into his image from one degree of glory to another. Lord, would you bless us and keep us? Would you make your face shine upon us and be gracious to us? Would you turn your countenance toward us? Give us peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You're dismissed.